Alber ah, Alberta. No, okay, don't forget it. And, it. and what's beautiful is, and we'll get him to talk about that, is that, is that he began, he was hearing, but he might have been hearing something for someplace else. However, the first time you say something and it doesn't work, your reference experiences tell you, well, I'm not called and gifted to do that. Because you've never done it before. When in fact, what you really need to know is, I'm picking up on something. Now, let me do this. Oh, over time I've learned, who here has someone in their family? Who's Albert, Albert, in this area over here. Oh, oh th over there, what's the situation? Okay, just stand up, don't say anymore. All right, and then you move on. And what he does now is the result of experimentation and learning without a high level of ego attachment to the outcome. So, Randy Clark and his mentor, John Wimber, healing gift, healing anointing, first thousand people he prays for, die. I don't even want to be in his healing line. But what does that tell you? That each time that your identity has to be determined by who God calls you to be, and then you very carefully choose what reference experiences get your attention. Because I can tell you right now, you have breakthrough moments and moments of absolute connection with who you really are that become lost because pain always has a stronger imprint than victory. And so when you're under stress, your mind goes to the failures faster than to the breakthroughs. And Bill Johnson taught me this. One day he was, he was going to pray for some of the fractured arm. And, and, and he started as though, in his thinking, in his, in his conditioning, as though he was looking to God to do a miracle. And the Lord stopped him and said, wait a second. Hold it. You're approaching this as though you're coming from zero into a healing. Didn't you just come from a meeting? where I had healed fractured arms and elbows and dislocated shoulders, and the Lord reminded him of the manifestations of what was already in his ministry. And then the Lord showed him, start from 50% and don't keep going back to zero. So what happens is when you start having reference experiences, you build from there to the next level. You don't go back to the starting point. Now, here, here, here's, here's the key. So God wants to give you reference experiences, and to do that, he wants you to risk. He wants you to take a chance. Now, what is in us, what do we have in us that we have not yet fully um, appreciated is that in us is the kingdom. We have this, this force of righteousness. We have peace. We have joy. And what, what I want to suggest to you is, you have in you, if you have the Holy Spirit, you have love. And what you just did earlier is you have power and you have authority. If you could learn how to access what you've already got and activate what you already have, then you could bring heaven into manifestation in any situation. What a healing ministry does or what a prophet does is they've learned how to activate themselves to be able to bring to manifestation what is needed. And they don't rely upon the territory or the geography or the worship team because they have to be the people that break through the environment. They've been trained by the Spirit to create the environment conducive to their breakthrough. And for you, you must learn how to create the environment conducive to your own breakthrough so that you can begin to release what is in you. And you have peace. You just haven't accessed it. Why do I know that? My peace I give unto you. You have joy. You just haven't accessed it. How do I know that? Because Jesus said that my joy might be in them. I have spoken these things. You have love already. How do I know that? Because the love of God is shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost who dwells in you. So if you have it, but you're not manifesting it, it's because you're waiting for God to do something, and he is waiting for you 
to get uncomfortable expanding your capacity. And that's why the Holy Spirit's called the Comforter, because of how uncomfortable it gets when God is manifesting and expanding and dealing with you to create in you what he wants. So therefore, you have some new reference experiences in terms of things we've already done, but how long does it take for you to access that dimension of, of, of spirit life? Let's take a look at the science of this real quick because I want you to understand what the military does, what God does, because this is how God designed the human machine to be programmed in the spirit. Here's how it works. At any one moment, my resourcefulness is going to be dependent on what kind of a state I'm in. Now, I'm going to talk about living in a kingdom state. Living in a kingdom state means this. Be ye filled with the Holy Ghost. as a biblical command. God wants you and I literally carrying the kingdom wherever we go. Because if you're in a dark place and you're supposed to be a light, that means that you can't always be succumbing to and, 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 and molded by the environment. Stanford University did a study. They, they, this is a fascinating study. They have these six people they bring in off the street uh, that are going to be doing a 15-minute uh, 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 survey. And they put them in a room with a person who is in a highly agitated state. I don't know what they did to provoke the agitation. They said something, they insulted them. I don't know how they picked a naturally angry person and then they did something even, you know, even more angry. But they have an angry person who is totally angry. They bring the six people in and they all fill out a survey regarding their state before they walk in the room. When they go in the room, they sit there. Here's the only rule. No one can talk for 15 minutes, just sit there. It's a weird test, but we're all getting paid 25 bucks for 15 minutes, we'll do it. So they all sit there with the angry person. 15 minutes later, they all file out. They have to fill out a survey again, same survey. Only now they're choosing words, and you know what we found out? The angry person is still angry. But the six neutral people are a little more angry than they were when they walked in. <laughs> Stanford is curious. They get a depressed person. I don't know what they did to find and qualify the person. They couldn't have, they couldn't have paid them a whole lot. I don't know, because the person would have maybe not been depressed enough. So, they, they do something to further depress them, and they sit them down. And then they have six people that come in, same survey, other group. They come in, they're fairly buoyant, they're fairly natural, they flow. They get in the room 15 minutes with a depressed person. By the time they walk out, everybody's a little more depressed. Now, this is fast. This is, if you want you to think about this. How a spirit of anger, depression, of lust, of, um, of hatred, prejudice, actually a demon, if you will, could get into a person and then the person becomes a hypersending station into the atmosphere, which quantum physics now, scientists now understand that, those, that there is an atmosphere that is created around you. And so just like wavelengths flow through a room, there's actually mechanisms that can register the degree of mental activity coming from a person. I mean, this is kind of the implications of this could be pretty bad because some could have less activity than others, but this, I'm, I, let's not go there at the moment. But they could tell the intensity of how you're in, how, what your, your thought process is. So suppose, let's just, be, let's just be spiritual for a second. We can go there because we're our own unique world here. Suppose you get in a room with a person who's highly demonized and you're accustomed to being your normal self and don't realize that atmospheres are things that you shape, not respond to. But you've never known you could do that until today. So now we put six people that are trained the way I like to train them. And they go into a room knowing that they've got righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And here's what happens. Peace is the great starting point for discerning of spirits. That's why the Bible says you're walking in the shoes of peace. The armor is always the shoes with peace. Why? Because if you're walking in peace, it gives you the ability in your palate to discern whatever other spirit's operating in the atmosphere. Peace is the starting point for being able to test every other spirit. So you're walking in this equanimity, this tranquility of the spirit. And you walk in and 